so in this video, I'm going to be introing to you guys the idea of solving something called a literal equation. And later on in the video, I'll definitely make sure I define what a literal equation is. Uh, but first here, we're going to get started with number one. And you guys have seen problems like number one before. So I'm going to ask, what is the base of a triangle that has an area of 24 square inches and a height of 8 inches? So we've got our formula for area of a triangle. And you guys know that it's A equals half base times height. So all I'm doing is plugging in the fact that we know the area is a 24 and the height right here is 8. And then when I simplify, I just take half of 8 and that's where I get my coefficient 4. And then I divide both sides by 4 for it to cancel out and I've now solved for the base and it must be a 6. Now we can check real quick to verify if I have a 6 by 8 triangle and it doesn't matter which way you see that triangle. If you do 6 times 8, you get 48. Now cut it in half and the area is in fact 24. So we know that 6 has to be the base. So now here's the deal with a literal equation. I can ask you to solve this formula for another variable. What that means is over here, I want to be able to rewrite this formula so that if I plug in the 24 and the 8, it automatically gives me that the base has to be 6. So here's our goal. What we're going to do is we're going to take the area equals half base times height formula, and we're going to now solve it for B. So if I'm trying to solve for this number right here, the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2 over 1, so that this 2 over 1 times a half cancels out, and over here I'm just left with 2 times A. Now on this side, I'm left with BH, so if I divide both sides by the height, the base is all by itself. B is now solved by itself. And to solve for B, we're going to say that it's twice the area divided by the height. Now over here to check, okay? Basically what I'm saying is, is if we know that the area is 24 and that the height's an 8, we should be able to plug in the 24 for the area and 8 for the height. And when we plug in these numbers, it'll simplify to tell us the base. So here, 2 times 24 is 48. And when I divide it by 8, I do get 6. So what we're going to be doing with literal equations is we're going to be taking the formula and shuffling the letters around so that we're basically writing a new formula. So what we did here was we said to find the base of any triangle, all you've got to do is take the area and double it and divide it by the height and then you'd be able to find the base for any triangle. Now, for the next problem, for number three and four here, what we're going to focus in on then is we are going to rewrite the formula for the radius. So currently, the area formula is pi r squared, and that tells you the area. But now if I give you the area, I want to be able to plug it in somehow and get what the radius must be. Now first I'm going to walk you guys through it the way you know how to do this. All we're doing is taking the A and plugging in 122.65625 for the area. And then I have equals 3.14R squared. Now if I'm trying to solve for R, I'm going to divide both sides by pi. So this divided by pi in your calculators, you get a 39.0625. So 39.0625 is R squared. And now we're going to take the square root in our calculators. And when you take the square root of 39.0625, we get that the radius has to be 6.25. Now, our goal, though, with a literal equation is to take the formula, which is currently now solved for A, and we're going to shuffle it around and solve it for the radius. So now the goal is to solve just for R. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by pi, kind of like we did here. And whatever the area is divided by pi, so the area divided by pi would be r squared. This cancels out. So I've got area divided by pi equals r squared. And now I'm writing in take the square root. We take the square root of r squared. We've now got r all by itself. So taking the square root of the area divided by pi should always give you the radius. So over here, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the area that was given in the problem, the 122.65625. And this formula says if you take the area and divide it by pi, so I'm going to divide it by 3.14. Then I'm going to take the square root of that. And that is now what the radius is. And so when we check it, all we did was the area divided by pi 
we took the square root of it and we did in fact get the radius of 6.25. So basically with a literal equation, it's going to have a bunch of formula or a bunch of variables in it and it's going to tell you what you it wants you to shuffle the letters around and resolve it for. All right, now let's take a look at number 5. We've got the equation 18 minus 4y equals 6. So there's only one variable, and if I tell you to solve for y, you guys know how to do this. You're going to subtract the 18 on both sides. That cancels out. You've got your negative 4y left, and that equals negative 12. Now you're going to divide both sides by the negative 4 for it to cancel out. And our answer here is going to be a positive 3. So if this is a numerical constant, and you only have one variable, you definitely know how to solve. Now let me show you guys the literal equation. Notice now we have an x and a y, and we're still trying to solve it for this y. So, same first step. You have to get rid of this thing, so you're going to subtract the 2x on both sides. Now over here, this was a number that we could subtract from the 6 and got a negative 12. Over here, we can't subtract the negative 2x from 6. We don't know what x is, so I can't get a numerical answer here. So this is the best I can do is say that this is going to be 6 minus whatever the 2 times x is. Now you're going to notice right here in my work though, I actually flip flop this and wrote it first because we have that rule that says the constant should always come last. So I actually have a little error. I need to make this a plus 6. That's now a plus 6. So I've got my negative 2x plus the 6. And I'm going to switch this to a plus real quick too. And now I'm going to show you guys that to solve for y, you basically now just want to divide both sides by this negative 4. And here, when you divide this side by a negative 4, I'm now going to show you guys something called the heart method. So when we're dividing this numerator by the negative 4, we've got this term to divide by the negative 4 and this term to divide by the negative 4. So that right there, it's called the heart method because when you're dividing, and you draw kind of your circles around the two, it ends up looking kind of like a heart. So if I take this negative two and divide it by a negative four, that's where I'm getting a one half as my coefficient of x. And now I've got this positive six divided by the negative four, and six over negative four reduces to the uh, three halves, which means right here, that positive six divided by the negative four, that should be a minus three halves, okay? So the only mistake that I had right there originally was that I just forgot to put that it was a positive 6 right here and that needed to be plus. But a 6 divided by a negative 4, 6 over a negative 4, does in fact reduce to a negative 3 halves. Um, next school year, your teachers are going to talk to you about this number and whether or not they want to write it as a fraction or as a decimal. If you have a decimal teacher, then you'd end up putting minus 1.5 here because 3 halves is 0.5. All right, now we're on to number six. So this is something you know how to do. Daniel invested $2,500 into an account and left it there for 18 months. If it earned 71.25 in simple interest, what was the interest rate? So you guys know to plug in the interest right here for I. We've got the starting amount for principal, 2,500. We don't know R. And we do know the amount of time here, 18 months, would be one and a half years. So to solve for R, what you guys know to do is to multiply the 2,500 by the 1.5, and that becomes 3,750. So when I divide both sides, that cancels that out. And over here, I get 71.25 divided by 3,750. That's where I'm getting the 0 0.019, and I've now solved it for the radius. Of course, when we're given this answer, we're going to move the decimal twice to make it the percent. So the idea here, folks, is all we did to solve for the rate every single time is we took the interest and we divided it by P times T. So take a look right here for the literal equation. If we're going to solve it for R, we're going to divide it by the P times T because that cancels out over here. And now R is all by itself. There's the little R all by itself. And over here, it's just the interest divided by whatever the product is of P times T. So here is the interest divided by the product of P times T, and that does in fact give us our interest rate. So the 2,500 is P times T, and when we do this math in the calculator, boom, it gives us the interest rate immediately. 
So now over here, same setup, if we wanted to instead solve it for t, all we're going to do then is divide by the coefficient of p times r, because that cancels out, and t's by itself. So whatever the interest is, divided by the product of principal and rate should tell you time. So to check that one, let's take a look here. We already know the answer should be that it was left in there for 18 months, one and a half years. So let's say if we do the um, principal right here times the interest rate, that's going to be the denominator of 47.5. So now I'm going to take this numerator and divide it by 47.5. So 71.25 divided by 47.5, and that's where we get that the amount of time would be one and a half years. So all we're doing for literal equations is taking what is something that is currently solved for one variable, and we're shuffling it around to solve it now for another variable. All right, here's another example of something that you have in fact seen. You've seen a problem where I've told you that the hypotenuse of a right triangle measures 12.5. So let me draw a right triangle real quick. All right, so there's my right triangle. And I'm telling you guys that the hypotenuse here is a 12.5. And that another one of the legs here measures 10. And our goal is to be able to find this missing leg. So to do that, you basically take the hypotenuse and square it. And then you subtract the other leg squared. So here we uh, get, when we multiply 12.5 times 12.5, it's 156.25. So subtract that 100, and we get 56.25. All right, now when I got my 56.25, and I go to take the square root of that, I get that the other leg had to have been a 7.5. Okay? So now, with just the formula... The literal equation, what we're going to do is, if it's currently solved for c squared, we're going to solve it for a. So to get a, which is just one of the legs, what did you do? You subtracted b squared from both sides, and that cancels out. Except now I don't have a number to subtract from a number. So the best I can say is that it'd be c squared minus b squared. Whatever c squared minus b squared is, I'm going to get an answer. And then I'm going to take the square root of that, kind of like we did here, I did c squared minus b squared. I got this answer. Then I took the square root of it, and it told me the missing leg. So to find the missing leg, it's always going to be the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. And over here, we can check to make sure that solve for a with this problem, it works. If I took the hypotenuse and squared it and subtracted the leg squared, I get 56.25, and now when I take the square root of that, boom, I do in fact get that the missing leg would be a 7.5. And that concludes the uh, intro video on solving literal equations. Thank you.